If you've been dating for any length of time, I don't have to describe the disappointment, frustration and disrespect women experience when men want sex too soon. You might even be questioning if it's even possible in this day and age to date without putting out before you're ready. So in today's video, I'm going to reveal what is the highest value stance you can embody and express that can simultaneously attract men who want a real committed relationship and repel those guys who are only looking to get sexual with you. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is apologize to you on behalf of men. If you felt disrespected, if you felt unseen, if you felt pressured, if you felt guilted, if you felt shamed, if you felt objectified, if you felt cornered, I am deeply sorry for your experience. There's no reason why this has to continue the way it is. This video is one grain of salt in the big scheme of things to help you have a different experience and connect with a man who can step up for you, who can have your heart's interests as a high priority and do things differently. And for that, there's gonna be a few things that you can do that can increase your chances in that way. This isn't a video to bash men. After all, I am a man. I have two sons, I have two brothers, and I have first-hand experience multiple times in my life of how when men show up in their highest selves, they can have incredible value to themselves, to their family, to society, to the world. This video would not be created if men were not in crisis. The reason I'm creating this video is because there's a large number of guys who show up this way, who show up leading with sex, who show up in a way that makes you feel unsafe and makes you feel objectified and makes you feel like a piece of meat, for lack of a better term. So because there's a crisis right now in the way men are showing up and the crisis is for many, many years, it's like thousands of years, things have been done a specific way. And now we're going, we're forced, thankfully, men, to go from me, my needs, my desires, my wants, to we. How can we get what we want versus I get what I want? So in this process, this process is messy. This process is not easy. This process is challenging. The bad news is this is happening. The good news is you can play a part in the solution. So this video has two purposes. The first purpose of the video is to share with you in very practical ways why this stance of holding longer before you have sex with someone is the best thing you can do for yourself and for the quality of your relationship going forward so that you are not cornered, that you are not shamed, that you have a stronger stance. If you have a strong enough connection to your why, it's gonna be far easier for you to hold this stance and to create the high value move that I'm about to share with you. The second part of this video is going to be what's the actual high value stance that I highly suggest you stepping into that is not just black and white, it's nuanced because you're an intelligent human being and you're watching this because you're probably wanting a different solution than the basic black and white script you can share with someone. So I'm gonna share this with you so you can use your own words to embody this stance and share something with men that can allow them to either step up and be stronger human beings for you or step down and pave the way so you can get what you want with somebody else. In addition to any reasons you might already be aware of, there's three strong reasons why holding off without having sex with someone for a while is beneficial to you as a woman. The first one is pretty simple, but it's worth mentioning because it is far riskier for you to connect with someone sexually than it is for the guy. Physically speaking, and there are exceptions, but physically speaking, your life could be in danger. Physically speaking, the guy could turn tables on you and create something really uncomfortable that without you knowing him, without you really understanding who he is, you can feel incredibly violated by you holding off longer. You're not eliminating the risk of something physically challenging and dangerous happening to you, but you're lowering the risk of that being the case. The more you know someone, the less likely it is that you will miss some red flags that will be life-threatening to you. The second reason is because you don't want to get emotionally and viscerally attached to someone who's not good for you. When you don't take the time to really get to know someone, to have emotional connection, to figure out if the compatibility exists, and go head on 100 miles an hour, have sex with them, there is a likelihood, and it's not small, that you could feel more for him than the reality actually shows. So what happens if you feel really attached to someone who is a narcissist, who is toxic in many ways, but your visceral connection with him prevents you or blinds you from seeing those red flags, 
Or worse, you see the red flags, but you feel incapable of disconnecting with him because you feel so much for him. Because that's a risk, and that is a higher risk than, let's say you connect with them, you become exclusive, and then the sex isn't great. That's a risk, but the risk of doing it early is higher for you. That's why you get to dictate the pace and say, you know what, I want to wait a little longer. Third reason why I highly suggest that you wait longer to have sex with them is because the value that he sees in you will increase when there's more emotional connection and more energy and time investment in you. Men tend to value what they work hard to get, which is not a carte blanche thing for you to make it hard for him just for the fun of it, but the nature of getting to know you, the nature of showing up, the nature of dating you consciously is going to allow him to create an emotional bond beyond, beyond the physical bond that makes it less likely that when he has sex with you, he can disconnect and leave you. Now, can that happen? Of course it can, but the risk is diminished. My recommendation is until you are at least exclusive with him, meaning he is your boyfriend, you're his girlfriend, he's not having sex with anyone else, you're not having sex with anyone else, there's a commitment, there's a sense of knowing each other. That's the earliest I would recommend having sex with him. There's multiple types of guys, but I'm going to describe three specific kinds you can gauge for so that you can embody the stance much more powerfully. It's gonna be number one, this is a guy who only wants sex. That's it. He's only looking for his sexual gratification. He's looking for a selfish need to fulfill his desires. There's gonna be guys who only want to connect at a very shallow level and want to do a hit and run. Connect with you sexually, move on to the next victim, so to speak. There's gonna be a type of guy who is leading with the sexual stuff at times, but is willing to step up his game. He's willing to be more conscious about the whole thing. He's willing to delay gratification. He's willing to do it in a way that's meaningful to both of you, not just him. And there's gonna be a type of guy that from the beginning will have the principles at play that I'm sharing with you right now and will do things in a way where he's holding, he's waiting, he's, he might have the urge, he might have the need or the want, but he's definitely willing to wait and he's conscious about it and he's even proactive in bringing it up. Now, this type of guy is gonna be the minority of men, so although he exists, don't hold your breath for him. We're really contending with right now the first two types. You want to figure out if the type of guy who's leading with sex early is gonna be the type of guy that only wants sex or is the type of guy that when prompted can actually have his best self show up into the light. Now, before I go into the specific stance, I have an invitation. If you're a single woman watching this video and you've been at it for a while and you haven't figured out what's really going on, why you're still single, I created a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that can reveal to you the answer to the question, why you're still single. I've taken many years of helping women in multiple countries, different age groups, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, and put all those learnings into a simple quiz you can take. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions, and in the next 60 seconds, you'll have A, the answer to the question, why you're still single, and number two, a report that will show you based on your specific blind spot what is the number one action you can take starting today to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Now here's the stance and it has two parts. The first part simply states preemption is always better when possible. It's not always possible, but if you are getting to know someone and he hasn't overtly connected with you in a sexual way, then before that happens, let him know that one of the things that makes you feel most excited when you date someone is that he's willing to wait until exclusivity to have sex. That you're looking for someone who, even though you feel attracted to him, he feels attracted to you, understands that it takes you longer than perhaps other women to get physical with him and definitely longer to have sex with him. Why? Because if you share that from the beginning, then A, if he has it in him, it's gonna be far less likely that he's gonna live with something sexual, but if he does connect with something sexual, then you can always bring back that conversation and remind him of what he agreed to when he started dating you. And at the same time, if he's the type of guy who only wants to have sex, that's going to create a red flag for him and going to let him know that you're not the right person to date, that he's not going to get what he wants dating you. The second part means that you understand this is something that happens and that you're going to take the very conscious approach that when somebody does that, instead of judging him and saying, you're out at the first strike, that you're going to be nuanced in the approach. Obviously, there's gonna be a range of situations. Maybe the guy is 
sexual innuendo, or maybe he's saying a sexual joke, or maybe he's proposing something that is a veiled type of sexual thing. That is one type of stance. Another type of stance would be where the guy is blatantly obvious and grotesque about what he's proposing. If the guy is really intense and he's incredibly disrespectful, you can cut it out from the beginning right there. But some of the situations you'll encounter, I think the vast majority of them, will be with guys where they're being somewhat sexual, but not necessarily incredibly disrespectful. And in that moment, you have no idea what to do. So the sense is simple. Rather than taking the approach of how dare you perv reach out to me this way, is I need more. I do it differently. So you're not making him wrong for it. You're not accepting that what he's doing is something you accept. But instead of having that energy of, dude, you shouldn't be even be alive right now. Why are we even talking? Is, hey, I want more. I need more. Will you step up for a high value woman? Can you do it differently? I appreciate that you want to connect with me. I find you attractive. I just do it differently. I don't do it this way. So the reason why I'm not giving you a script is because I consider you intelligent enough to come up with your own language. If you embody the stance of not looking at him as a flawed human being, but give him the benefit of the doubt of, hey, I'm inviting you right now to step up. Will you step up for me? And there's going to be two situations that happen when you have that stance, where you're not looking at him as a flawed human being, where you're not reacting to him as how dare you and shaming him for what he's saying, but hey, saying, hey, let's take this time out. I, I do it differently. If he has it in him to be more conscious, if he has it in him to be respectful, if he has it in him to delay gratification, that that invitation that's not shaming him will allow him to step up and do it differently for you than he would have before. If he doesn't have it in him, he's going to start arguing with you, having a pissing contest, metaphorically speaking, in terms of who's right and who's wrong. In which case, if you set the boundary and the guy doesn't want to step up for it, then you can simply say, you know what? I'm out. Thank you. Uh, have a great life. Move on to the next person. This will do two things. Number one, it will cause you less stress and less pain and less of that contentious energy that doesn't really serve you. Forget about him, doesn't serve you. Second, it will, if he has it in him to be better, because you're not shaming him, because you're not reacting passionately with a slap in the face to something that he's not yet aware of how to do better, that you're going to invite him to step up. Hope you find this helpful and useful and insightful. And if you do, it would mean a lot to me and to my channel if you click like and subscribe to my videos. And if you want to find out how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, then I invite you to watch this next video right here.